everybody, it's Tyler here at WVROX, checking in team number 4467, Titanium Titans coming in from Pennsylvania. Uh, you got to check out this robot here, just a great, efficient machine. I love their packaging that they go through, but I think something cool we're going to talk about here on Behind the Bumpers, too, is some iterations that they've gone through throughout the competition season. They actually have a brand new intake we're going to be showing off, so I'm very excited to show more about that and just the cool stuff they're doing here on Titanium Titans. Uh, help me speak more about this team, by the way. I have Rachel, Ian, Ryan, and Logan. And like I said, full cargo path and journey, some cool custom stuff. Let's talk more about this team coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Apply the skills you gain as a FIRST student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in FIRST because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. So starting out on your robot, let's talk about your uh, intake here. I'd uh, love to hear about the initial design and then it looks like you actually have a fully built another intake right over there too. So tell us more about that one as well. Yeah, so actually, so we started out with this like four bar system and then Logan, you can show it actually deploying and it's, uh, we use a system of chains along the side and then thrifty bought rollers. So now one issue with it is whenever it would hit into a wall or hit into anything else, we have an issue where this chain tends to skip. So you can actually see it's worn down into the actual robot here and into the thrifty bought wheels. And then also at the bottom, we had to, we had a lot of issues with the sprocket down here. So what we ended up doing was we have, we built a fully uh, working like prototype robot beforehand. Now we decided to try out this new intake on the robot. So the way this one works is we have the same four bar system, but rather having them both come to the bottom, we have ones attached, they will be attached like to the magazine up here. So then that way, Whenever it hits into a wall, it can just bend up and go that way rather than having all the force go down here and then break the sprocket. Another thing we did is we changed to belts rather than gears so we don't have to worry about it skipping and running into the rest of the intake. So you're actually, it's almost making it more compliant, right? If, if you think about that, I love yeah. kind of almost like a shock dampener uh, as well too. That's really neat. How long did it take you to make that by the way? Um, so this intake, it was actually really quick. So nothing was together as of last night. Um, we, I actually had, I had all the T-Stacks and I had the robots in my garage all right. and um, around like nine, I just kind of took out the parts and then I assembled it in my garage last night. I love so it. So we could have it and then as soon as we test this today, we're going to move it over onto our actual robot because we've already had a chain issue today. So this will be something we'll see later on with at WV Rocks as well too? Yeah, I mean, as long as uh, testing goes well. That's fair enough on that. So. Um, from a, a design-wise on that, so your team is going with an over bumper, uh, really wide intake. When you're looking at the game challenge on it, uh, is this something that's kind of been the, your pathway the entire time, or did you have any other ideas uh, for tackling an intake this year? Um, honestly, this has been our design pretty much from the beginning. It was really efficient, and we had, I mean, we've always had a really easy time getting balls. Um, so it's always kind of been minus... I mean, minus the chain skipping yeah. there, it's always been really, really good. I, I still love that you're taking on the, the challenge of, of creating something new, and especially that little amount of time. I'm very excited to see that uh, put on. I think that's really cool. I like that a lot. Uh, let's keep following that uh, cargo path uh, going into your magazine and your shooter. Ian's going to talk a little bit more about what's going into that. Uh, obviously, you've got a lot of uh, compliant type wheels uh, as it goes into your magazine, uh, and then it uh, looks like an extra kicker wheel uh, going to your shooter, too. So talk to me more about that and, and, of course, your turret, too. Yeah, so after we um, intake cargo, they go into our passive um, polycarb funnel. Um, so since we don't have any mechnum wheels and we have a full width intake, we need some way to center the balls. So we did that just with bent polycarb um, and some grip tape here. And then they go into our magazine, which is a series of passive and powered rollers. Um, the back of the magazine is made up of the passive rollers and then on the top and back side, it's all powered. Um, and all of it's powered by chain um, and a verse planetary and a bag motor. And then, as you can tell, we used a lot of the thrifty bot um, squish wheels because we really liked them for um, their compliance. And then after um, it gets through the magazine, it gets stopped by our kicker wheels, which are powered separately than the rest of the magazine. Um, and then whenever we get target lock with our limelight, it'll 
power this and then power the shooter as well so we can actually shoot cargo. Um, so our, shoot, our uh, shooter is mounted on a turret, um, which was one of the most difficult things to design this year because we started out by having both of our climbers mounted and then we had to fit our shooter and turret into that space. That's yeah, tough for really packaging, tight. right? Yeah. yeah, it was very difficult to package. Um, so you can tell we don't have a ton of clearance, but it does work. Um, so it's all belts. Um, and then one of the big things we found out after a lot of testing in a practice field is how important this back roller was. So originally we just had a passive um, roller here and then through some testing we found out if we actually want to get the distance um, we wanted, we had to power it as well. So that was another design change, but a lot of iterations throughout the season. Where do you typically shoot from? Like what's kind of the sweet spot for your so team? So we really, I wouldn't say have a sweet spot. It's pretty much anywhere on the field that isn't super close because obviously this is as far as our hood goes down. So pretty much anywhere outside of like a three feet range of the hub we can shoot from really reliably. Uh, and also this material here, is this 3D printed or what is this made out of? Yeah, so a lot of the parts you'll see that are this black plastic are 3D printed on a Mark Forged. Um, so like these are turret gear in the back in all 3D printed on a Mark Forge. Let's start to wrap up uh, on the robot cell. Then we're going to talk about some electronics too. Logan's going to talk about your uh, climber as it goes through. It does look like a 3D bot climber, but with some modifications. So I'd love to hear about the custom work you've done for it. Yeah, it is. So we have just the 30 by elevator climber. However, as you can see, we do have a custom set of CNC hooks. Originally, these were only a single hook pointing outwards away from the robot. However, for need to speed, we decided to make a double hook so that it was either to climb from any position on, on the bar. We also have at the bottom there a custom gearbox. This was inspired by the Andy Marks gearbox. However, we didn't need all the features that it had on it, so we minimized it and cut out a lot of different things, mainly for weight reduction and for size reduction too. One thing I gotta ask you, uh, you've mentioned the Thrifty Bot a lot on this robot so far. What made you choose uh, going with a lot of Thrifty Bot components this year? We've been getting stuff from Thrifty Bot for a while and we've just found A, shipping is great, and B, Ryan who runs Thrifty Bot is just a really good guy. And I know there were issues with these climbers, um, like the 3D printed blocks broke. Um, it was an issue with pretty much all the climbers, but he shipped out Delrin blocks for um, no charge. So it's just kind of like a really good relationship with that company. Um, we just really like working with them and they make really good products. So cool. that's, that's, that's cool. Sure. Ryan's, Ryan's a pretty good guy, yeah. so definitely for yeah. sure. Speaking of Ryan, let's hand it over to Ryan. Talk about uh, your electronics. I know you're really proud about some of the uh, underpan uh, of your robot too. So uh, let's talk about anything on your robot itself and then uh, anything underneath you want to showcase too. Uh, yeah, if we could get this flipped up, that'd be great. So really, when we were designing the electronic system in this robot, we decided to start from the ground up, literally. And we mounted all of our main electronics components under the robot, where they would be safe and out of harm's way. So, so if you look under here, we have um, a labyrinth of wires. Sure. Um, but you have your Robo Rio and your uh, power distribution hub, and it's under here, and we have this polycarbonate panel covering it, make sure that it's all out of the way. And um, so when we started, we started with just the drivetrain and the swerve chassis, because that we thought that would be the hardest thing to make, and it would be the most important. Sure. So we started with that, we wired all the swerve chassis, and we left some wires up to go up to the top and then we wired up the magazine to run and as we went up we had it designed so that as we went we could add more to it so that if something were to break we could take it out replace it and rewire it easily such as these climbers which were notoriously finicky I like the thought process overall. You've seen a lot of teams start to do the uh, the upside down mounting, that sort of thing. I do want to ask you one thing on here. So notice a little bit of that polycarp here. Uh, do you when do you hit the bump when you go across the field at all? Does that like potentially impact any electronics there? Uh, it has not proven to be an issue so far. I believe that they're securely mounted enough, and that they're the polycarb. Um, really just keeps anything from penetrating. So it generally has not been an issue. Sure. Well, Titanium Titans, thanks a lot for taking time to show off your robot. I love, like you said, the packaging design. Really cool to hear about the intake uh, iterations as well, too. So we wish you best of luck here at WB Rocks. And of course, good luck in future seasons as well. Thanks a lot.
This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Apply the skills you gain as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.